I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Wednesday, November 10th, and the year is 2021. I'd like to welcome you to this live stream here on YouTube. I am so glad that you're here with me, whether this is your first time visiting or you are returning to my channel, because tonight I'm going to teach you how to make a diamond fold, fun fold easel card. That's a mouthful, isn't it? But I've got a modified version for you tonight because when I was creating it, I decided to change it up just a little bit. Isn't that the best part about card making is making each card our own. Now, in addition to the card I'm gonna share with you tonight, I have six other cards to share with you using the exact same bundle of products and you're not going to want to miss them. Three of those are fun folds as well, and they're all part of this month's online card making class. Now, before we get started, I have a couple things I wanna go over with you. First and foremost, there is going to be a project sheet that is free for you to download when tonight's live stream is over. You're gonna find it underneath the title to this video in the video description. You'll be able to click on it, download the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and all the supplies. I made it nice and easy for you. Those of you here in the live chat, Gina will share that with you towards the end of the stream as well. And if you're wondering who Gina is, let me introduce you. You'll see her name here in blue. It's Gina Curcio Holly, and you might recognize her surname. She is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio, and she has been stamping with me the entire 23 years I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She is more than capable of answering your questions and providing links during this live stream because quite honestly, I can't keep up with your comments. But I do come back and I read every single one. So your commenting is very important to me. If you would do me a favor, log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That's a Gmail require, I'm sorry, a YouTube requirement, not a Lisa requirement, because we would love to interact with you, whether you're watching the replay or you are here for the live chat. I think we're let, ready. Let's get over the stamp table and let's get started. All right, the very first thing we're gonna start with is the paper trimmer. Typically, fun folds involve a little bit of this, and I love my paper trimmer because it includes both the cutting and the scoring blade. Now, the cutting blade is the dark one. The scoring blade is the light one. They navigate up and down out of the way. This clear cutting guide, wait till you see what a champ this is tonight. It's a big deal for tonight's card. Also at the top and at the bottom, there are nice straight ledges here because if you're like me and you can't do anything straight, I've got you covered here on this trimmer. You'll be able to find this product as well as all the others in my online store. Again, I'm not gonna go over all the cutting dimensions with you because they are in the project sheet. And there are multiple layers, but none of them are hard. This is an easy card and wait till you see how impressive it is. I will tell you that this basic white card base measures five inches by 10 inches. And we're gonna do two simple score lines. The first one is at two and a half inches, which is here. So I'm gonna line that up right against that straight edge and we are going to score. And then I'm gonna move over to five inches and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. I wanna make sure I'm right up against that ledge because remember I told you I don't do anything straight. All right, now I'm gonna set this to the side for just a moment because I wanna just kind of crease up on this so you can see where we're going. I know that's often difficult here because it's you know white on white. So I wanna give you an idea of where these creases are. Now we are going to need to actually create the diamond point here on the front of this card so that we can create the easel. Now, if you're looking at this, this is gonna be the bottom quadrant of the score lines that are here. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to grab a pencil. This is my favorite. I get so many comments about this pencil because I brag about it. The lead is super duper soft and it erases like a champ. This is of course not a Stampin' Up! product. This is a big pencil, but I have some products linked for you over on my website under the shop tab and they're labeled craft room favorites. They're things I use here in my studio that are not sold in my online store that I love that you love as well. So I've linked them all there to make it really, really easy for you and you'll be able to find that there. I'm trying to get you guys all focused in. So let me bring in a little bit of color there for distraction. You're gonna need to find the center of this in order to create that diamond point. Now, my grid paper has a, a ruler here at the side. It also has it at the bottom. I know that's off camera, but you know what? Half of five is two and a half inches. And I made a little tiny pencil mark right there. I know it's gonna be difficult to see. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this to the side for just a moment, and I'm gonna bring that trimmer right back in. This is where this clear cutting guide is going to be a saving grace. 
What we're looking to do is we are looking to cut from this fold line to that pencil mark. And I know the pencil mark is light, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure it's not gonna show. So I can actually close this cutting guide and I can navigate to make sure that that pencil mark is inside the track and that my score line, I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera, but boy, when you get to be my age, you gotta be close, right? <laughs> All right, to try to get that right inside that track to create that line. So that little gray line that you see right here, that is where the blade is going to travel. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to cut, and that's gonna give me this, we're gonna discard that, and then we are gonna turn it, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing now. I'm gonna lock up that little guide. I'm looking to have my point right here, and again, to try to get my crease right here. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to cut. All right, so we've got our diamond point now. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna start assembling this card. So let me just take that pencil out of the way and we're gonna bring in some other layers here. Now, a typical diamond easel fun fold card is cut on the diamond here at the top and on the bottom. So I wanna make sure I point that out to you so that you could go ahead and do that if you wanna create your own variation. But tonight I decided to change things up big time for a big reason. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're gonna add some layers here. I have a piece of Blushing Bride cardstock and look at this gorgeous designer series paper. This Whimsy and Wonder paper is so pretty. One side has foil accents, the other side has a beautiful pattern. I don't know about you, but I could use that all year round, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my adhesive and we are gonna go ahead and add that to the back side. And what we're gonna do is we are going to border this on this piece of cardstock. Now, I left a very small margin here. Keep in mind, when you're making your cards, you can tweak anything that I'm doing to make it your own. I'm now gonna flip this over, and we're gonna add a little bit more adhesive here to the other side. And then this is going to get adhered here to this top layer here. Now, again, I like to open things up because I don't do too many things straight and I am looking to border this within that small area. So I'm looking at the top, the bottom, and the sides, and then when I'm happy with it, we'll press that in place. All right, the next thing we're gonna work on is the area that's going to go here. So I've got some more paper here. So I've got a piece of Coordinating Designer Series paper, same as this one. Again, there's that foil. I probably know that's really good and shiny, isn't it, for you? So let's go ahead and add some adhesive here. And this is also gonna get layered. You know, I love layers because it can take a very simple pattern card, which is you're gonna see what this is when I'm done, and really jazz it up. And it's a great way to use up your designer series paper. Now you might think I'm gonna add a piece of white cardstock here, which is what I typically do, but I thought, mm -mm, let's add some more designer series paper. The great thing about these patterns is they can be layered beautifully. This one is from the same package. Look at that, you see the foil and those snowflakes? Again, double-sided. I could certainly use that all year round as well. Stampin' Up! is award-winning for their designer series paper and for good reason. They have gorgeous, gorgeous patterns. I love that one side is themed and the other side can be used usually mostly all year round. All right, so here we've got this. This is gonna get attached in a few minutes and I've got lots of tips for you on the inside because wait till you see how this comes together in this modified diamond easel fun fold card. Now I've gone ahead and I've pulled out a piece of white cardstock and I've pulled out this gorgeous Christmas tree die. Now I'm gonna show you where this is from. This die comes from the Christmas dies or the Christmas trees dies. Now it's very, very extensive. So there's images here on both sides. I added them to a magnet sheet. That's just something I love. And if you like those magnet sheets to keep your dies in place, that's in my craft room favorites as well. This is sold individually, but you're gonna definitely want it with this. This is the Whimsical Trees stamp set. So these are sold individually or as a bundle. If you buy them as a bundle, you're gonna save 10%. And quite frankly, you're not gonna want one without the other because look, these pieces die cut those, and there's some even additional pieces in the dies that work in coordination with this stamp set. Absolutely stunning. So I went ahead and I took the liberty of die cutting that tree before you joined me, and that left me with this. That's just one less thing I gotta drag in and out of your camera view, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna ready this because I wanna add it to this panel. So I'm gonna flip this upside down, and if you take a close look, you're gonna see that I already have some mini dimensionals on here. I did that to save some time, but I wanna talk you through a really fantastic tip. Now, if you're like me and you love the dimension on your cards, 
but you find that getting dimensionals in those little tiny places is really challenging for you, oh my goodness gracious, here's a great tip. So what I like to do on my mini dimensionals, while they're on the paper, I take a pair of scissors. Now these are designated for my sticky stuff here in my studio. That's why they have red ribbon on them. And we cut them in half right on the paper. And then the secret is your take your pick tool. I can't live without this. This is like my third hand. It has a putty tip on one side and then there are interchangeable attachments that go here. And I've got the paper piercing tool attachment here because obviously these are pretty darn small, aren't they? So I can kind of just pick it up with my tool and then I can set this in an area that I'm going to want to place that in. Now you're gonna see I have dimensionals here and I really don't have a whole lot going on here. And because I don't want it to sag, I wanna teach you another little trick. This is where your glue dots come into play. Now watch this. So I'm gonna peel back one here to reveal it. I'm gonna pick that off with my tool and I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm making this into a little tiny ball. Now you might be thinking, well, that's gonna remove all the sticky and I'm here to tell you it will not because these things are super duper sticky. Do you see where I've laid it? Right here where there's a little space for the cardstock to rest. So I'm gonna put one there and I think I'm gonna add one more down here because we do want some stability Keep in mind that um, a good majority of my cards are placed in the mail. So I want them to show up on the other end looking like I created them. I don't want them to come lopsided. Now here is one other tip for you right here at the top and it's gonna be important when I take you to the next step. So I'm gonna take one more of those glue dots here. We're gonna roll that up with our finger. These kind of make the itty bittiest little dimensionals ever because they're really, really gummy and then I'm gonna place that here near the top. Now the take your pick tool is wonderful because you can kind of spread it around and get it where you want it. Okay, so this is the panel that's gonna be part of the diamond easel. It's very important that whatever you put here that you're going to put it on the diagonal. So this is where my grid paper comes into play. This is sold in a pad of 100. I cannot live without this paper because I don't do anything straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle these points here and here down that line. So it kind of assures me that I've got things even. Now you see me over here to the right of your camera view, I'm gonna remove those little tiny paper backings here that are on those mini dimensionals. And yeah, it's a bit tedious, but you know what? If you're anything like me and you love to craft, all these little details are absolutely amazing. Now, if you don't like this, let me give you another tip. You can add an adhesive sheet to a piece of white cardstock before you run it through the die cutting machine and then you can peel the paper off and then you don't have any dimension but it's going to be easy to adhere or fine tip glue or liquid glue. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this on the diagonal and I am going to attach that here. All right, silicone craft sheet, can't live with that without this product either here in the studio. Adhesive liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it, which makes it just wonderful. And of course, you know, silicone is gonna keep things from sliding as well. I wanna add some rhinestones to this, but I wanna go ahead and I wanna add this to here first. Now the secret to this card comes to the inside and you are not gonna to wanna to miss the other six cards I'm going to share with you. So since this is going to go here, we're obviously only gonna need adhesive from this area down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this upside down. Just wanna keep an eye on where it's going. And we're gonna take our adhesive and we're gonna run it right across here. If you are in doubt, always a little bit shy than a little bit too much. This is also a great spot for liquid glue if you prefer that. I'm just speeding things up a little bit since we're all live and together. You see this point right here? That is going to act as your base and you are literally going to leave a small margin of it around the outside just to make it look layered. And then when you're happy with that, you're gonna tack that in place. What should happen when you lift it is this should be open. That's very, very important. Now to make sure that it's good and stuck, I like to come over to the back and make sure it's there. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes you've stuck it down, you gotta kind of shimmy it a little bit. So if you don't press too hard, you probably have better luck. Now let's talk about the embellishments. I love rhinestones, but we have to do the whole inside yet, and there's some really important things, so hang with me. If I added a rhinestone here to the top, just above the top of the tree, it's going to be shallower than the tip. That is why we added that little balled up glue dot, because when I go to place this here, guess what's going to happen? They're going to be virtually the same height. Now, I didn't push this down all the way because I want to show you something. 
If your dimensional or I'm sorry, if your little embellishment is shallow like mine is, okay, we're gonna go back to this, watch. I've got that rhinestone there, so let's go ahead and just use our fingers. I am actually going to take this now and I'm gonna elevate that rhinestone. That glue dot is your best friend. I can't live without glue dots, very much like dimensionals. They add a whole lot of pizzazz and a whole lot of umph to a project and they make it look so professional because of the differentiation in the depth of your cards. Now, I decided to add some more rhinestones to this because can you ever have too much bling when it's Christmas? This fun fold is gonna be fantastic for you all year round. So think of all the other cards you could make and you know what, it's also gonna be fantastic for invitations. Perhaps you have a family wedding coming up or another occasion, perhaps a retirement. The base that's modified on this fun fold is gonna give you lots and lots of options. All right, so let me move those out of the way and I am gonna press that in place. But you will recall now that I told you that this is going to be an easel card. That means this inside area here is going to be critical to this because you're gonna be able to see it, right? All right, so get ready. We're gonna go on and move on to the next step. What I have done is I've cut myself actually two of these and I did a couple ahead of time just to save time here. So you're gonna need two of the squares and you're gonna need two of the designer series paper layers. You can mix and match your patterns. So don't feel like whatever designer series paper you used on the outside, you have to use on the inside. So mix and match and that's the beauty of coordinating designer series paper. So I'm gonna take that first square and here is that clear cutting guide beauty again on the diagonal. So my points are gonna be right inside this track and then when I'm happy with it, we're going to slice and that's gonna give us two of these. This is size just a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. I'm gonna close that door and because that guide is clear, I'm able to see the paper and make sure that it's slid a little bit right and a little bit left and when I'm happy with it, which I think I am, we'll give that a little bit slice. And now we've got all pieces. Now, the reason I did a second set of quadrants is obviously for the corners, right? So let's talk about how to adhere these. Now, I tried all kinds of things, and I'm gonna tell you right now, liquid glue is the way to go because of these little pointed corners. There's nothing worse than you assemble your card and it's beautiful and it gets ruined in the mail. My multi-purpose liquid glue is fantastic for this. It's very, very strong. You don't want to use too much to the edges because it's going to you. It's going to ooze out. This little holder is another one of my craft room favorites. I know it's kind of silly, but it keeps the glue always at the top and it's ready to use. I always get it started here in my silicone craft sheet because I'm really not a glue girl. I'm an adhesive girl and I have a tendency to squeeze too much and then it's all over the place. And I don't like getting my fingers all sticky. Anybody else? So this is where I'm going to use my take your pick tool with that putty tip. And then I am going to situate this on top of here. The liquid glue is not only going to make sure that you get to the corners, it's also going to allow you a little bit of shimmy room so that you have that nice border all the way around. Now you'll recall that this was a square. So there was one. And here is the other. This is just how simple this is. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the inside. But keep in mind, even though we're going to place these pieces in a strategic location, there's gotta be another piece here that creates the easel. So let's work on that next. I've got another piece of Blushing Bride cardstock here. It is the exact same size as the base of this one. That is all inside your project sheet. Very important that you work on the diagonal. Boy, I made that mistake the first time because it's intuitively we want to make it straight. And I pulled out one of these. These are the wonderful snowflakes. You see that iridescent shimmer? Aren't these pretty? So I decided to lay that there. These come in a 24 pack. They are laser cut and ready to go. You just pop them out and they're gonna be fantastic on your Christmas tags or even on any of your winter cards. Now, what I decided to do just to kind of hold this in place as I took my adhesive and I made just a little tiny bit right there. That Stampin' Seal Plus is very, very strong. So I only need just a tiny bit and I'm centering that right in the middle. Now, before you join me, I went ahead and I used that exact same stamp set and I used this greeting and I mounted it on a piece of foil. Now, you're gonna notice that I used basic gray card, or I'm sorry, basic gray ink for this because that black ink was just too harsh for me for this really pretty pastel color. So we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna brace this over that snowflake. 
make sure you use a generous amount of dimensionals. You want to make sure that your card is going to be well balanced, especially if you're going to mail it. There's nothing worse than it shows up all crooked, right? And then we're going to center this here and we're going to tech that in place. This is going to be the stopper for the easel card. So let's go ahead now, let's go back to the center of this card and we're going to work on this. Now I'm going to give you a couple very important tips about assembly. If you're like me and you eye things and you don't always get it straight, I gotcha. So what I like to do is I like to hold this where I think I'm going to put it. So this looks centered for the most part. And then what I do is I close that cover to see if it's going to be hidden. Well, I'll tell you what, I've added it too many times and it's been too high or too low. I find by adding this first allows me to manipulate these a little bit better. Now, one of my cards, I actually did this first, and then this was a little bit off-centered. And if you're also like me, and you kind of forgot where you put it, and you're like, oh, is it still going to be straight when I lift it up? Go ahead and take that pencil I showed you. Let's just make a little tiny line on each side, okay? And what we're going to do next is we are going to come in, and we're going to add some adhesive here to the back side, to those corners, to hold this in place. And again, you might want to use liquid glue if you need a little bit of wiggle room. And then I'm going to make sure this is exactly where I had it. Now, before I press too hard, this is a foolproof thing. I always kind of hold it where I think it needs to go. And then I kind of look and I'm like, is that right? Is that right? It looks kind of right. But to me, it looks a little crooked. Doesn't it look crooked to you? All right, let's just straighten that out. Yep, it's going to be hidden and we'll tack that down. Now, you may want to use liquid glue for these as well. And that is what I recommend because then you can get all the way in the corners. But... That's going to take too long because i got a whole bunch of more cards i got to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and just use adhesive on this one. And you're going to see why the glue is really going to be a lifesaver. Now we're going to want to keep a perimeter between this diamond shape and the corner. And you're looking to do the very best that you can. Keep in mind, your cards are handmade. They're never intended to be totally perfect. All the things that we notice, nobody else ever notices. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to border this side as well. And I'm looking to do the same here. And if you're a little bit off, it's okay. I promise they're not going to throw tomatoes at you. They're just going to love the fact that you made them a card. And so we've got another one here. And that's going to go down here. That little pencil mark I'm going to erase. This is where that eraser just comes into play. This thing is amazing. I mean, it literally just takes off all the lines. Perfect. And then we're going to put the other one here and wait till you see when we close this how this is going to work and then i have one other here okay and then this one is going to go down here i'm kind of like butterfingers with these little pieces all right i'm looking across the bottom i'm trying to do my best to keep them even and we'll tack that in place now up here is where i decided to do a little bit more stamping or obviously you can keep it blank because you can actually Put your own personal greeting there. Now this word, Merry Christmas, I pulled out from one of my other holiday favorite stamp sets I want to share with you. It's called Christmas to Remember. I have used this so much making my holiday cards. It's insane. I absolutely love it. I love the font and it's going to be a timeless purchase. Again, in my online store and I do offer very generous rewards. This is going to go right up here. Okay, so we've got a little greeting there. And of course, there's still room for me to sign our family name there. And are you ready to see how this folds? All right, so here we go. We've got this. This is going to come down and this is going to fit like so. Oh my gosh, isn't this fantastic? Let me pick it up so that you can see it a little bit closer. Here's how the easel works. Pretty, pretty, pretty and so elegant. Now also, let me talk to you about one other thing. You might notice that this is a square card. That means you're going to need to make a custom envelope. Now, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell an envelope punch board anymore, but you can get one in my craft room favorites. And this is the one that I put there for you that's linked. There are all kinds of sizes on here for different size envelopes. I love, love, love this thing. And you want to talk about easy? The steps are right here on how to do it, and it's not difficult, I promise. And now I have a coordinating card and envelope to be sent in a beautiful diamond easel fold variation. But you might recall that I mentioned to you that I had other cards to share with you. And I'm really excited to pull those out to show you. Now these next six cards, unlike this one, are all part of this month's online card making class. It allows you to stamp with me from home. 
There are going to be three fun folds and three regular card layouts. So here is the first one. These are using all the exact same products, same suite of stamps, dies, and the designer series paper. Are you ready? Watch. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? So pretty, a very soft color palette, really, really beautiful. Now, if you decide to partake in my card class for this month, which we're featuring these cards, you're gonna receive a video tutorial to stamp along with me from home. Step by step, I'm gonna teach you how to make every single card, ready? And then here is the next one. Oh, isn't that pretty? You're also gonna receive an extensive, ready, 18 page, PDF tutorial that's going to walk you step by step on how to make each of the cards. There are multiple pictures of every card in the tutorial along with cutting dimensions and a complete list of supplies. So whether you like to learn by watching a video or you like to learn by reading instructions, I've got you covered both ways. So we've got our three fun folds here. Here's our regular card. Now, if you're wondering how you can join me for this month's online card making class, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is place a $50 product order in my online store at lisastampstudio.com and you will need to use the exclusive card making class host code. That's really, really important. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing that you are in ordering to get the card class, to get the video and the PDF tutorial. That's going to ensure that you get the video and you'll get the link for the tutorial as soon as your order is placed within 24 to 48 business hours. We're really quick about that. Now, there's only one exception to the host code use that I wanna tell you about. Because if you're like me, especially this time of year where we're crafting like crazy, you're not gonna use the host code if your order is $150 or more in product. Because Stampin' Up! is also gonna give you a reward for an order of that size. But if your order is that big and you didn't use the host code, you're gonna to need to let me know that that order was intended for this month's card making class. Otherwise, I've got no way of knowing. If you go to my website and click contact me and just say, hey Lisa, this order is large, but it's intended for the card making class, I will be sure that you get the video link and the PDF tutorial. Now, for those of you that are wondering, can we just get the PDF tutorial? The answer is yes. It does not include the video. It is the same number of pages. I only charge $1 per page for all the photos, cutting dimensions, supplies, everything that you need to know, including the step-by-step -step instructions. That is going to be found on my website under the classes tab and then PDF tutorials. I have a very vast library there. Feel free to look. It is an immediate download. So once it's purchased, you're able to access it right away for these exact same cards. Again, that tutorial does not include the video. Now, a couple things that you need to know before we get going. I'm looking at my notes so I didn't forget something. Oh, the ordering dates. That's the most important thing. It's today, November 10th, and it only goes for four days through Saturday, November 13th. I only offer it for a four-day ordering period. There's a different class every single month, and I am super excited about this one. This uses my very favorite bundle of Christmas products. Now, I want you to be sure too, if you visit my website and you are there new for the first time and you scroll down about halfway, you're gonna get a pop-up to join my weekly e-newsletter. And you're gonna to wanna to do that because if you like free, I've got a free tutorial every week in that newsletter that I don't share on any of my other platforms. If you sign up for my newsletter, it's a no frills thing. It goes right to your inbox every Thursday and we would love to include you. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. And if you click that little bell icon and the word all, you're gonna get notifications because I'm coming back with you live next Monday. And I'm looking, that's November 15th already at eight o'clock Eastern time for a fun fold card you cannot miss. I had not seen this card before until a customer friend of mine shared it with me and I thought, I have got to share it with you. So you're gonna wanna be here for next Monday the 15th. I look forward to having you join me for this month's card making class. And if you have any questions, reach out to us at lisastampstudio.com. Gina, thank you so much for your hard work and moderating tonight. And I will see you all with me on Monday. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.